There are five basic positions to HTML elements. The default is the static position. What static says is in the order it appears in the code, that's the order I'll put it on the screen. And so in my code, I have these five divs here, one, two, three, four, five, and that's mirrored on the right side here with the first guy being blue and then green and then red and then black and then purple. And so that's the, the default position, static. What happens if we take one of these guys, we make it fixed. So we're gonna play around with this little black div here. So let's go make the black divs position fixed. Pay attention to the, uh, the purple bar. So position, we'll say fixed and we'll save. And what happened? All right, so fixed says, give me an X and Y and I'll fix to that position. Watch what happens when I scroll down. You'll see that the black bar stays fixed to that X and Y position. If you don't give it an X and Y, which we didn't, the default X and Y is the, the X and Y associated with its static position. Fixed also says, when you fix me to the screen, you're gonna take me out of the normal document flow. That's why the purple guy moved up. The purple guy sees that there's no more space in between. So technically the black bar is not taking this space anymore because it's floating on top of the other elements. And so the purple guy moves up. That's what fix does. Fix you to an X and Y, and I'll take you out of the normal document flow. Now to specify some sort of X and Y, we can use top and left. This is what I like to do because it puts the origin, the zero, zero at the top left of my canvas, my page. And so I use left for my X value, let's say 45 pixels. And I use top for my Y value. Let's say 100 pixels, we'll save. And now we have the black div fixing to uh, 45, 100. Even though we scroll, it stays fixed there. And again, it breaks it out of the normal document flow. And that's why the purple guy moves up. Now there's another position that's really closely related to fixed and that's sticky. So let's reset our, our page to normal document flow, which is static everything. We'll save. All right, watch what happens to the black, or excuse me, the purple bar. When I set the black bar's position to sticky. So I'll save. All right, so what happened? Well, two things. Unlike fixed, Sticky doesn't have a default X and Y. So even if I scroll down, it's not sticking to anything. So you have to give Sticky an X and Y. Also, unlike fixed, it doesn't break normal document flow. So watch what happens when I give an X and Y. So we'll do the same X and Y, 45 pixels for my X, and we'll say a 100 pixels for my Y, we'll save. And now when I scroll down, Sticky says, when I hit your X and Y that you gave me, I'll fix to that position. So I'll scroll down, I'll scroll down and there we go. So it's sticking to 45 by 100. And of course it's not breaking normal document flow, which is why the purple guy's not moving up. It may look like, and it does look like visually, it breaks out of the normal document flow, but technically it's still here. It's ta still taking up this space. And that's the major differences between sticky and fixed. Fixed floats things above the normal document flow and fixes to an X and Y. Sticky doesn't break out of the normal document flow. And when it hits the X and Y that you have to give it, it will fix to that X and Y. So let's reset our canvas or our little page to normal document flow, which is static everything. We'll save. And for this next example, I'm gonna put the black div, the black bar in the, in the, uh, the red bar, which is three. All right, so the black bar is in the red bar. We'll save, format. All right, so relative and then absolute. We'll do relative first. So relative says, from an origin, I will move X and Y. I'll offset by X and Y. And so if we don't give it any sort of X and Y, it's not being offset. And so let's give it an X and Y. Let's just say an X of 20 pixels, and we'll say a Y of 20 pixels, and from an origin. Now the origin is the X and Y of its static position, of its normal document flow. So as you can see, it went 45, excuse me, 20 pixels left or X and then 20 pixels down, which is Y. We can also offset it way out of the box. Even though it's technically in the box, we can float it off the screen. So let's say, or off its, uh, off its parent div. So we can say negative 420 and we can get the box up here. It's out of view. Let's say, I don't know, 350, 350, there we go. So again, all relative does is from an origin and the origin is the X and Y of its static position, I'll offset by your X and Y. Now this is very closely related to absolute. Watch what happens. Let's reset the page. That's normal document flow. Let's say position of absolute. We'll save, nothing happens. We haven't given it an X and Y. 
Absolute says, from an origin, I will also offset X and Y. So let's give it an X and Y. We'll say an X of 20 pixels and a Y of 20 pixels. We'll save, and what's going on? Well, absolute differs from relative in that the origin point can differ. So relative says, my origin point is my default static positions origin, X and Y. Absolute says, my default, my origin, is the nearest parent whose position is not static. And because the position of our red guy in all of these default, uh, these default divs is static, it's searching out for a parent whose position is not static. It can't find one, so it goes directly to the body. If you want absolute to behave within the confines of the red bar, it's real-time parent right here. We have to modify the position of this parent, which is the red bar, to a position other than static. So what happens when we change its position to relative? So position, we're going to make the parent relative. We'll save. And just like that, it behaves how we expect it to behave, which is to say the origin now is the parent's origin right here. So that's the major difference between absolute and relative. Relative, the origin point is always its default static position origin. Absolute, its origin differs. If its parent's position is static, it'll skip that and it'll look for a parent whose position is not static. If there's no parent that's not static, it goes to the default all the way up your tree to the body. So what is display? Well, display works differently based on what type of element you're applying it to. For standalone elements like images, all display does is it tells the page how other elements should behave around that element. If you're working with things like containers, which is to say things you can nest other elements within, display has two uses. The first use is the same, so you can tell the page how other elements should behave around your element. The second use of display is to tell your page how nested elements should be organized. So let's look at the, the two differences, the two uses of display. We'll go with the first one. And to illustrate the first one, we're just going to line up all of these divs in a line. So we're going to change the display of these divs to in line. So we're going to say display. And by the way, uh, just like position has a default static, display has a default block uh, attribute or, or value. So we're going to say inline. So we're going to say give all of these guys an inline display. Let's see what happens. All right, so where did it go? Well, inline says, as you give me information, I'll put it on the screen in a line, but there's no information in these divs. So we give it information. As it comes, it puts it in a straight line. If we want these divs, these containers to exist on screen without any sort of, any sort of information, we have to use inline block. So if we change this guy to inline block, and inline block says, give me a width and a height of some sort of element, and I'll put that in a line. So I'll save and we kind of have what we want. And so the blue guy's behaving, the green guy's behaving, what's going on with the purple and the red and the black? Why aren't they in a line as well? Well, all of these divs have a display of inline block. That includes this black div nested within our red div here. And so you can't see it, but this black uh, bar div is taking up space, I think here, and it might be taking up space here. This is why the whole thing's off. So we have to reset this black bar's display. And the default display is block. So if we go to the black bar and we say display and block and we save. All right, well, we're kind of 90% there. The blue guy's behaving, the green guy's behaving, the red guy's not behaving. Why is the purple guy not showing up on the line? Well, inline and inline block also say if there's no room, I'll wrap to the next line. And so there's no room for the purple guy. So if we just shrink the width of our containers, See the 40, we now have what we want. We have all of them in a line using inline block. This is the first way that display works on containers, on things that can nest other elements, is that we can tell the page how other elements should behave around that element or other elements. The second use, let's reset to, to uh, normal document flow like this. The second use of display is to tell your container, your page, how a container's contents should be organized. So to do that, I'm going to add some containers within our red, our red, uh, our red div, just like that. And so let's go to the red div and we'll change its display. We'll say display, and there are many more ways to display. As you can see, you can say things like flex, flex box. We're just going to look at flex and uh, grid for now. We're not going to go too in depth or this video is going to be like 10, 15 minutes long. But just to say that we're telling the red bar now, let's increase the width of that. 
We're telling the red div how elements within it should be organized. And this flex is like a line, but it's flexible. It's morphable. It's, it's mutable. So we can say things like we can flex on a row. We can flex on a column. We can add space, justify content, space evenly. So again, it's just like inline or inline block, except you can um, add attributes depending on the, the size of the elements. The line will shrink, expand. That's one of the ways of organizing information or organizing elements within another element. Another way is the grid. So let's do grid. We'll say grid and we'll save. And with grid, we can specify how many columns, how many rows. Let's go by columns. So let's say grid template columns. The first column will be 105 pixels. The second column, same. Third column, same. So now we specify three columns. If we add another div to this grid, where would it show up? Well, it'd show up on the next row. So we have a three by, what, rows by columns. So two by three, if we do, there you go. Let's pad it out, two by three. We can also specify things like the gap between columns. So let's say, what is it? Grid or column gap. There we go. We can say 10 pixels. And again, this is just the second use of display to tell the page how, how a container's elements should be organized. So that's going to be it for the video. I hope you've seen the difference between position and display. The, the way I think about it is you position the element first and then you hit with the display. So position tells your HTML, your page, where to position the element. We have like things like absolute, relative, sticky, fixed. And then you move on with display to kind of fine tune where it's showing up. Don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I think I'm going to be using, there's a video coming up I'm going to do on image carousels. We're gonna be using grid, so we'll get some practice doing grid. We'll do an image carousel doing horizontal and vertical scrolling. And there's gonna be another vid I'll do where I'm gonna do a, an image carousel that's a, it's based on a circle. So it's gonna rotate around a circle. That one should be, should be good. So I'll see you guys in those videos.